I am Jeffrey Villardwin, and Rosicci Total War, a mod for Medieval 2 Total War, as Hungary had become more aggressive and was about to win the campaign following their conquests in Poland, we are about to go to war with them. This is a major inconvenience and makes the short campaign harder and will obviously also make it longer than the long campaign because now we have the challenge of avoiding any other faction from reaching their target of 30 settlements in addition to having to go to war in the future with the other two Russian factions. Many useful buildings have been completed across our kingdom. Yuleb of Kursk has been married to a young lady, Evdokia Zemanov. More new units are recruited. Here is Yuleb of Kursk, who has just married as soon as he came of age. The Byzantine Empire is the most advanced faction. The Kiev Principality remains strong. Here is again Yuleb of Kursk at the castle of Nushi. One of the Cuman generals is retreating eastward at the head of a large force. Poland is subsidizing our attacks on rebels in exchange for military access, which we grant gladly, as one of their villages is now within the territory of Krakow, which we bought from Hungary. We cannot thank you. You have further proposals? Please let us hear them. Oh, it is good of you to ask us. Poland is willing to subsidize an attack on Hungary if we attack Novgorod. We will pass this offer for now. So, the time has come to attack Hungary and to prevent their expansion into Poland. The first battle is against a Hungarian army near Krakow, led by a general called Lukács of Varad. Our army is led by Zakaria of Suzdal, one of our best generals and now governor of Krakow. We have superiority in heavy cavalry, as the purchase of Krakow has rewarded us by four companies of mailed knights. Our enemy has many light units, two units of crossbowmen and some ballistas. Be ready to give all for God and kingdom men! We waited and waited for the rain to stop. These are the mailed knights of Krakow. Very glorious looking. Units, I wait my orders. We deployed in the low ground and the Hungarians attacked. As soon as their infantry was engaged, our cavalry outflanked them and attacked them in the rear, breaking the entire Hungarian infantry line. Very soon, only the Hungarian general, Lukács of Varad, was left fighting with his bodyguard. General flees like the coward he is. Press onward and break the spirit of his army. All of Christendom will be awed by the victory we have won here today. Our general defeated Hungarians, losing only 163 men. Our heavy cavalry destroyed the enemy army and took many of the enemy prisoner. The medieval two total war engine sometimes gets the balance of battle wrong, especially if one army has a lot of cavalry. The Hungarian king ransoms 
at the prisoners? A most honorable victory, my noble lord! It was a clear victory, we only lost 163 men. Our diplomat to Poland reports that the Hungarians are besieging another Polish town. I wish there was a way to induce a truce between Hungary and Poland, ideally even a lasting peace. Our diplomat to Denmark is now a master of diplomacy, having succeeded in obtaining more war subsidies from Denmark. Here is our capable diplomat, Bogdan Tucha. Zakaria of Suzdal has led another army against the Hungarians, this time defending the village of Velichka. Velichka is defended by a Hungarian general named Petri Imre. We shall claim victory in God's name, men! To battle! We waited all day and waited and waited and the damned rain only became worse. Units, I wait my orders. It is nearly dusk now and we are compelled to attack as a mist has descended upon the battlefield. So here are men, these are the uh, mailed knights of Krakow. They are locals who have built a Stonehenge in their spare time. And our men are already attacking the enemy general and he's about to be surrounded by more mailed knights attacking his rear. So he's now double teamed by mailed knights, he's been surrounded. And there's even some infantry now approaching from behind, so he has been completely cut off from the rest of his army. And uh, his fate looks sealed. There is something mysteriously beautiful about this mod. Even these units, all of whom are vanilla units, somehow look better. So we've got some spearmen in the mix, some senior militia, we've got some junior militia. The enemy general flees like the coward he is. Press onward and break glorious heaven above. Our men have captured the enemy general. Guard him well, give the dog some wine, and be sure he can see us defeat the rest of his army. The enemy general has been taken prisoner. Petri Imre. And the rest of the army is gathered in the village square. We are attacking from all sides. Here some enemy cavalry has been pushed back. Our three archers are pummeling the uh, village square with arrows. Our men push forward as the enemy tries to counterattack and silence our archers. There are some crowed axemen here fighting for the Hungarians. Here's a uh, giant melee here. The uh, junior militia have pushed forward and the Hungarians have counter-attacked with some light cavalry and some militia of their own. We also have some woodmen here. And more junior militia, they hit this unit in the flank. It's a spear unit. You can compare here the vanilla militia spearmen with the uh, Rushichi junior militia. 
which unit looks better. I wish they hire this guy who did this Rushitu models to work for Creative Assembly. He's a genius, his models are amazing. So there's more fighting also on this side. With, uh, we're coming in from all sides. So here there is some uh, light Hungarian cavalry. They've only got a couple of horsemen left. Actually, it looks like there's a general here. As well, the enemy general is here. There are also some crowd axemen, some light cavalry, some archers. We've only got a unit of junior militia on this side. But they are holding their ground. They are an upgraded unit with upgraded armor. They are wear helmets and are holding shields. They are doing okay. And uh, here we have some non-upgraded militia. You can see these ones don't have shields, don't have helmets. They just wear their country clothes and they are holding a small axe. <laughs> That's it. Initially, all... Uh, Russian units were like this. Some X-Men, some of them had long axes, some of them had short axes, and that was it. That was all the units at the beginning, the sort of the first 50 game turns. Anyway, so now I've got also some um, free archers here, one of uh, the better units. We've got some, uh, some militia, junior militia with axes as well. And they're doing okay against the Hungarians. The uh, free archers are free fighters, rather. They are firing fire arrows. The Hungarian spearmen do the best they can to hold back our men. Our archers can still land some uh, shots into the village square from this distance. More junior militia on the side, they are fighting the enemy general, I do believe, on this side. Or maybe not. The enemy has been attacked in the rear with some male knights, and so they suddenly start to retreat. They went into a rout and panic as soon as they saw our male knights behind them. They've all been taken prisoner, and so now the battle is approaching the village square. The Hungarians only have a few units here. They are holding that side on the left where their general is, but they're losing ground on uh, all other sides. And here. The enemy general has fallen, Lukács or Varad. He was attacked in the rear by these chain mail knights. And we're now in the village square. The Hungarians only have a couple of men still resisting. And they're resisting rather well. We have to hand it to them. It is unwise to praise the day before sunset. But our men are winning the battle and forging a worthy victory. This is a clear victory that goes to only men of great virtue and valor. So, a victory. We have won the battle and taken the Polish village of Lichka back from the Hungarians. We lost a quarter of our army, mostly militia units that can hopefully become easily replenished. Our upgraded junior militia with the shields and the helmets did exceptionally well. One killed 252 enemy soldiers. Blessed Lord, we thank you for delivering us. God be praised for blessing us with victory! Velichka is peacefully occupied.
the Hungarians are still besieging this Polish town, winter has arrived. Our ally Denmark is now at war with the Grand Duchy of Novgorod and have broken their alliance with the Vladimir Suzdal Principality. A new diplomat, some militia, some construction completed. Zavid of Lubitsch is betrothed to Anastasia Lubok. The ungrateful villagers of Velichka have rebelled against the army that liberated their village and killed 55 of our men, losing only 59 of their own. I wish the Polish army was fighting as well as these unarmed villagers do, so that we would not have to go to war with Hungary. We remain the strongest faction in the game. Yes, my is the purveyor of heresy. Ah! Ah! A Hungarian heretic named Endre Szekeres has blasphemed and he is executed by our priest Simeon Bajkovic. A Hungarian army has lifted the siege of that Polish town and marched south to attack Krakow. They were defeated in an auto-resolved battle near Krakow by our glorious general Zakaria of Suzdal. Sadly, our glorious prince Vladimir the Just, the Kniaz of Kiev, has died. He is succeeded by Samson, his son and heir. We are now in the year 1200. We are re-equipping our army to sustain the war with Hungary. New buildings, our diplomat to Constantinople has died, but we have another diplomat in Thessalonica. Prince Samson is now our new faction leader. We remain strong. In the meantime, the Cumans have taken back Eski Tavan after a civil uprising and our young general Zavid of Lubitsch gets his first appointment as a general with a task to take back Eski Tavan. We begin to see what we were told at the campaign start that it is pointless to try to conquer non-Russian territory especially in the land of the Cumans as it will lead to attrition from constant rebellions. The Cuman army consists mostly of cavalry, very true to form. Our army is numerically stronger and has many units with upgraded armor. The Cumans are commanded by Captain Ulietu. What a name! Captain Ulietu, your end is near! The battle was all resolved, we have just witnessed a village battle and uh, what can cavalry do in street fights inside a village. This time we are not going to show mercy like last time. After the battle, Zavid of Lubitsch put the inhabitants of Cumania through the sword. He is nonetheless noble in rule for releasing the prisoners, although he killed every living soul in Cumania, which is not what you might at first expect. In the meantime, Onani of Radonej has been accompanying our faction leader Samson into the depth of Cuman land and has conquered a Cuman village, Veli Kajalski, by the Sea of Azov. We have harbingers of war, raids from the steppes. A nomadic people is coming from the steppes onto Rus' lands. We must prepare for battle. The nomads have declared war on all Russian peoples. This is a historical event when the Polovsky Cumans invaded the lands of the Rus at the end of the 12th century. It was the subject of a wonderful piece of music by Alexander Borodin, completed by Rimsky-Korsakov, two of the greatest Russian classical composers. Rather than Prince Igor in real history, it will be Prince Samson in this campaign who will have to fight the good fight against the steppe peoples. Stables have been built in Piraeus Laval. A plague has broken out. 
let's hope it does not reach the lands of the Rus. Cosma of Suzdal has been fair in rule, and his chivalry has increased. A vast horde of nomadic riders is bearing down upon the gates of our cities and castles. They are here to exterminate the Rus people and colonize our lands to foster their own legacy. So we are now engaged in all-out war on two fronts, in the west against the Hungarians and in the east against the Cumans and their fellow nomads. At last the situation is getting worse, it's getting even very hard, which suits the very hard campaign level. On the upside, we are again the most advanced faction. We have an income of 60,000 gold, but we seem to be losing money as the situation starts to be getting out of hand. A few new buildings. A new royal, Daniel, has come of age. The Vladimir Suzdal Principality is now the most advanced faction, and the sneaky fellows have made an alliance with Hungary. More new buildings, including a mustering hall in the newly conquered castle of Shah Khan in Cuman land. We are back to being the most advanced faction. Our general, Boris Pukishev, has intercepted a Cuman army out in the steppes and defeats them in battle. In the meantime, our war with Hungary is in full swing. Our general, Andrei the Just, has attacked Kosice, defended by a small Hungarian garrison. But two Hungarian relief forces arrive in time to help out the defenders. Kosice is guarded by a single company of militia spearmen, so everything depends on taking the town quickly and holding it against the enemy reinforcements. Both sides have militia, so this is a case of defeating the AI with quick actions. Be ready to give all for God and kingdom men to battle! Nothing is to be feared but fear. It seems we must attack in a snowstorm or not attack at all. The sun is setting. Night is about to fall. The snow will only delay the enemy reinforcements. So, to battle! Saints above! Are they men or idiots led by rabbits? I mean to find out. So, to arms, men! Our junior militia have been armed with shields and helmets and look more like proper soldiers. The Druzina bodyguard look, of course, amazing. Units, I wait my orders. Boys! An old cries. Night is falling. We must not waste time. So here are the wonderful Rusici units, there are some militia archers, they are pushing this wonderful looking ram, much nicer than the siege rams we have in vanilla. And here is Andre the Chancellor, our general with his bodyguard, looking very glorious. The sun is setting. And 
this is the Hungarian army. They are approaching from the other side. And they do not seem to be in a hurry. There you can see the arrangement of the various armies. We have a encircled procedure. All men are going in. We are through the enemy's walls, into the breach for glory and victory. The battering ram has done its work. Now is the time for brave hearts and brave deeds. We've made a hole in the wooden fences of Kosice, and we've captured the gateway. Our men now are engaged with the uh, one company of spearmen Only defending Kosice. the enemy force remains. And we have units coming from behind from their rear. Now they have been attacked on both sides and they break. The enemy flees the battle! Run down those worthless peasants! They run towards the uh, town square as our men run after them taking prisoners. Our men have slain the enemy general. Now his men will lose heart. We've captured the enemy captain, Captain Georgi. And the Hungarians still have a couple of men resisting. They've all been killed now. And our men are now moving forward to defend the main gate from the oncoming Hungarian armies. So they left one militia unit here. And the rest of our force is hurrying up to take positions near the wooden walls. Here we have left a ram blocking the gate. It was left there carefully, it was positioned there so as to block the gate, slow down the enemy. We're also sending some militia archers on that side. The timer has reached zero, we have uh, won this battle, but we would rather destroy if possible the enemy reinforcements. So we've set up our army here. This breach on the walls has also been blocked by a siege ram. And we've got some archers on both sides. And we are waiting for the reinforcements to make the mistake and attack us while we're holding the walls. So our men here have been deployed on two sides. And the enemy seems to have stopped. They have decided they've lost the battle and they're not committing themselves. This makes sense, I suppose. So here they are, the two armies. So here's the first army and there's another army this way. So the Hungarians have already lost this battle. So I guess they think there's a little point in uh, pushing their attack and they've just stopped so we can stop the battle victory is ours let victory be a salve on our wounds proudly earned in the name of the holy cross what wounds we took Kasiche at the loss of only 26 men the only bad thing about it is that the AI was too sensible and did not attack us while we had barricaded our army behind the wooden fences of Kosice. Our courage has prevailed. These plans are yours, my lord. Andre the Just peacefully occupies Kosice. He orders a reconstruction of the wooden walls. Uh, 
In the meantime, a new general, Vyacheslav the Wrathful, has arrived near Krakow, and he attacks a Hungarian force laying in ambush near the village of Velichka. The ambushes were surprised. So it is snowing again. Mountains are used to snow, and so are our brave soldiers. To battle and glory. So here's that wonderful army of uh, vicious love, the wrathful. Here are some of those Krakow mailed knights. Some free fighters here, archers, backed up by cavalry. They're wearing Byzantine style lamella armor or breastplates. Here are some militia archers wearing helmets, at least some of them, and with shields on their backs, so they've been upgraded. Here are also some uh, junior militia armed with shields and helmets, also upgraded. Some more free fighters wearing lamella armor of the Byzantine type. Some of them are wearing chainmail, and they also have small breastplates. Here's our general. Vicious Love the Wrathful with his Druzina bodyguard. Some of our men are sneezing, some are blowing their noses or clearing their throats. What do you expect? with so much snow. So, more wonderful units here. Archers at the front. And this very fierce looking unit of uh, Druzina spearmen with the uh, characteristic Druzina helmets. And here are some Chernia Klobuki horse archers with shields on their backs and uh, the Marka horses, another innovation of Rusici. Again, the wonderful Marka horses. Here's another unit of archers. So, we are holding this uh, slight hill, waiting for the enemy to make their first move. The Hungarians uh, have uh, failed in their ambush. The Hungarian ambush backfired. And so the Hungarians have sent off some light cavalry in our direction, but they have been uh, murdered by archer fire. And they beat... Uh, quick retreat Our archers are firing at any Hungarian units approaching at the moment the Hungarians are sending forward on their skirmishes some archers here are scrambling get a better position. Some enemy infantry attempted to attack our archers and they've been intercepted by our mailed knights as the archers retreat out of danger. And here our senior militia spearmen have attacked the uh, Hungarian army. The battle is in our favor. If we remain true and wholehearted, victory will be ours and a large body of the Hungarian army has been routed. There were just peasants here, armed with uh, agricultural implements, and uh, more peasants here have been routed. What a silly army to lay in ambush. And so they are all on the run. Here are our mailed knights. They attack the routed peasantry and 
taken prisoner. Here's some Croatian axemen. They've also been routed. The entire Hungarian force is now in disarray. Only the enemy general is still the enemy fighting. Blooded. They have lost half their men. The enemy general has no honor. He flees the field of battle and abandons his men. The general now joins the fray. The enemy flees the battle. Run down those worthless peasants. And we can admire once again this wonderful Drusina bodyguard. Wonderful armor. And our glorious army. There are a few Hungarians still around. These archers are taken prisoner. This is a clear victory that goes to only men of great virtue and valor. So, a clear victory. The Hungarian ambush backfired. The enemy lost their entire army at the loss of only 49 men from our side. The uh, King of Hungary ransomed the prisoners. Yes. God had granted his faithful this victory. We have set an ambush ourselves, it seems. Thank you for watching.